So the conversation intensified in the years after that, and then in 1995, a truly dreadful biography of John Paul II by a fellow named Tad Schultz uh, came out. And I was reading this to review it, and I'm thinking, I can do better than this. So that spring, I pitched the idea of my doing a biography of the Pope to his press spokesman, Joaquin Navarro Valls, a Spanish layman. And in December of that year, over dinner in the papal apartment, the Pope made it pretty clear that he thought it would be a good idea if, if I did this. What's interesting, I think, is the next step. I wrote him after that dinner and said, can I please have a written indication of your will in this matter? Um, because I thought I needed that to sell the project to a publisher. So he writes back and, and says, you're well prepared to do this. I'll cooperate as much as I can. Give my best to your wife. Bye-bye. <laughs> Two months later, I went to Rome to talk about how we were going to make this work. And I said to him over another dinner, uh, there are two things necessary to make this work. One is I have to have access to you, to your associates, and perhaps to some paper that would normally be under a time lock that I think I need to tell the story the way it needs to be told now. And the second thing is you can't see a word of this until I hand you the finished book. And he just looked across the table at me and he said, well, that's obvious. Let's talk about something interesting. That, that really captures the character of the man. He knew, he had taught his whole life about individual responsibility, personal responsibility. This project was going to be my responsibility. He was not going to look over my shoulder and say, do this, don't do that. Now, unfortunately, that was not the general attitude towards this in the higher levels of the Roman Curia. So I had to learn how to maneuver in that space over the next three years. But um, I, I think him saying that's obvious, that I can't see this until you hand me the finished project, tells you just about all you need to know about how, how he thought of the way people should act and behave. Absolutely, and, and I know it's, it's just a fascinating story. You, you had to win over the trust. It, it wasn't just getting his okay, it was winning over the trust of the key people, and they weren't going to just hand it to you. You have to earn your trust, and it was clear that that happened. And, I mean, you form friendships that no one else will ever have that comes from such an outside point of view, I don't think. Well, it was and interesting, that's, that's, if I could just interject yeah. at that point, that yeah. when I went to Poland numerous times, where I was already reasonably well known, the book The Final Revolution had been translated into Polish, a lot of my articles had appeared in Poland. But when I went to talk to John Paul II's oldest friends, it really took a while to warm things up because they had felt so betrayed by other American biographers, by Schultz, by Carl Bernstein. And I said to one of them, after we, the ice had been broken and we had had a very good uh, conversation, she said, you are not like the others. And I said, the biggest cross I am carrying in this project is my biographical predecessors, who all thought of him exclusively through a political optic. And I was trying to get to the man from the inside, from his spiritual life. 